AMD, wow, what a week. What a week, Pat. And I just want to say on Friday, you know this, because over the weekend I was pitching back and forth with you uh, a market watch piece I was working on. And I said, who are going to be the next three mega cap companies, which are companies with valuations over $200 billion on Friday, AMD closed at somewhere around 150. On Monday, the announcement that you're about to talk about came out and their market cap jumped to 180. And I felt like I had absolutely nailed the premonition. The only problem was is the piece came out after the news, despite the fact that I wrote it first. But I'm telling you here, Pat, as my witness, you knew I was writing that piece before that news broke. I did. I vouch for you. You may have asked me a question about it. Uh, that's how I know. <laughs> no, you were You were spot on. You were spot on. So what on earth drove the stock up to a closing of 154.45? Um, or actually it, it, it opened. Uh, it, was, it was interesting. <clears throat> I'm going to jump right to the meta announcement, which meta slash Facebook said it was using Epic. Uh, which, by the way, you know, my, my my comment was, well, that's great, but it's really not as big a news as as you you might have thought, and maybe that's why the stock went from 154 down to 140. But the news that came out was that AMD brought out a a new Epic, third generation AMD Epic with AMD 3D Vcash. Wow, that's just some awesome acronyms. There. So, uh, first off, uh, HPC is an important market. Uh, it's not just for universities uh, or national projects, although AMD did win uh, some big ones uh, with uh, their uh, with this chip, but also their uh, accelerator, uh, the MI2, the Instinct, and um, uh, it's also for things like banks. It's it's for drug discovery. Uh, it's for high frequency trading. So high performance computing has actually turned into high performance computing, not just the national lab. So uh, this new chip, so what the heck is a 3D Vcash? Well, what AMD did is, is uh, you know, AMD's calling it a 3D uh, package, which I'm going to give them credit for. I thought it was more of a 2.5D, but if they're going to call it 3D, I guess it's 3D. Uh, but essentially, they've put a giant piece of cash to uh, accelerate it. And, you know, their claims are that um, um, it increases performance on certain uh, HPC workloads uh, up to uh, 40 to 50 percent, which is which is pretty incredible. And I, I see now why they're winning many of these uh, national uh, national labs. Um, so, I mean, they've tripled the uh, amount, tripled the amount of L3 cash. Uh, you could put, you know, there's a hundred, 800 megabits of cash uh, per socket, uh, which is completely uh, bonkers. So whether it's um, element analysis, structural analysis, computational fluid dynamics, uh, EDA, uh, this thing is, is absolutely uh, rocking. Uh, AMD also brought out some partners, Altair, Ansys, Cadence, Siemens, and uh, Synopsys. Um, the MI200, you know, it's interesting with AMD, they keep making these huge announcements on the GPU side. They're getting a little bit of traction, but 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 not a lot. NVIDIA is, is winning most of that, but they brought out a new MI200, Instinct MI200, which, by the way, on paper, uh, on, on a floating point basis, does blow away the uh, uh, NVIDIA um, A100. Now, hardware has never been, GPU hardware has never been AMD's challenge. It's, it's really been the software. With CUDA as locked in uh, is, it, as it is, it's, it's harder for AMD to drive business, let's say, than uh, and Nvidia, but uh, I'm optimistic here in in, in what they can mean. Um, the market does want more competition. Uh, AMD did win uh, multiple uh, lab uh, wins uh, over Nvidia with its GPU. So I think it's definitely looking up for the data center side of the GPU house.
Yeah, Pat, and, and it was a big week overall. You know, I sort of alluded to the Facebook news. I mean, it's interesting with Facebook is because the company is is almost uh, an untouchable in terms of everybody's disdain for some of Zuckerberg's antics and the company's treatment of its users. But at the same time, its users are staying steady and, in fact, growing. The stock price is up more than Amazon for the year. Um, and the metaverse, they've seemed to somehow, at least it, in early days, taken ownership because even Microsoft is going to partner with Meta. I can't, I can't call it Meta though. So I'm hard. just going to call it Facebook. I and I'm, you. Well, you know, because I'm not going to actually universally accept Metaverse as our future term, and we'll come back to that. So that was a really big win, a big announcement for the company. The other one that I just wanted to touch on around AMD was. The announcements uh, rise with SAP and AMD becoming uh, a deeper, more integrated partner. And this really is a shout to Lisa Sue and her team's successful capturing of more substantial market share for data center compute with Epic. As the company has is, is, is usurped its, its longer term goal of 10 percent. And I also point out that Intel still has a huge amount of market share. So everybody that's you know, calling their demise early, they're still very, very, very important in this space. But having said that, um, SAP has come to recognize that it needs to make it easy for SAP users that are migrating uh, and upgrading to S4 and to, uh, you know, to new technologies on SAP to be able to do it with AMD in the most seamless way possible. So for the longest time, there's been an extraordinarily deep partnership with Intel and SAP, and it was seemingly untouchable. But this move and the fact that SAP not only is offering it, but Rise with SAP, which is their program that's all about simplifying and bundling the delivery of SAP in the cloud, is going to standardize uh, more uh, capabilities around AMD. It was a really good reflection. It, it shows a really positive momentum. 